Okay, now, now we're entering chapter 13, aircraft fuel systems. There's gonna be a total of 115 total questions in this section, and it's gonna be divided into 12 parts. All right, so remember, there is gonna be a quiz after every part. Make sure you get a 90 or better to go ahead and continue. All right, so let's get started. Question number one. Through a common manifold and outlet in each wing. Through a common manifold and outlet in each wing. Through a common manifold and outlet in each wing. So fuel jettisoning is usually accomplished through a common manifold and outlet in each wing. Fuel jettisoning is usually accomplished through a common manifold and outlet in each wing. Question number two. Lower landing weight, lower landing weight, lower landing weight. So the primary purpose of the aircraft's fuel jettisoning system is to quickly achieve a lower landing weight. The primary purpose of the aircraft's fuel jettisoning system is to achieve a lower landing weight. Number three, both number one and number two are true. So let's take a look here. The fuel jettisoning valve must be designed to allow flight personnel to close the valve during and part of the jettisoning operation. Also, during the fuel jettisoning operation, the fuel must discharge clear of any part of the airplane. That is true. They should be able to turn it off, off and on on demand and it has to make sure that when the fuel is being dispersed into the air it doesn't hit any part of the airplane so definitely number one and number two are true in regards to fuel jettisoning okay number four two separate independent systems two separate independent systems so which of the following is employed to maintain lateral stability when jettisoning fuel. It has two separate independent systems. Two separate independent systems. So which of the following is employed to maintain lateral stability when jettisoning fuel? That it has two separate independent systems, left and right. Number five, Federal Aviation Regulations Part 23 25 and CAM 4B. Federal Aviation Regulation Part 23, 25 and CAM 4B. So fuel jettisoning systems is required under certain conditions if the maximum takeoff weight exceeds the maximum landing weight. What regulations cover the requirements of fuel jettisoning? Fuel jettisoning is covered under FARs Federal Aviation Regulations, Parts 23, 25, and CAM 4B. FAR 23, 25, and CAM 4B. Federal Aviation Regulations, Part 23, 25, and CAM 4B. Number six, boost pump. Boost pump. Boost pump. Pump. So fuel is moved overboard in most fuel jettisoning systems by the fuel boost pumps. Fuel boost pump. Fuel is moved overboard in most fuel jettisoning systems by fuel boost pumps. Number seven, dump limit valves or low level circuit. Dump limit valves or low level circuit. So fuel jettisoning past the limits by federal aviation regulations is usually prevented by dump limit valves or a low level circuit. Dump limit valves or a low level circuit. Number eight, defuel the outboard wing tanks first. You defuel the outboard wing tanks first. So which procedure must be followed when defueling aircraft with swept back wings. You have to defuel the outboard wings tanks first. Defuel the outboard wing tanks first. Number nine, allow operations of engines from one tank. 
allow operation of engines on one tank. So referring to figure 17, what is the purpose of the pump cross feed valve? The purpose is to allow operation of engines from one tank. Pur figure 17, if you look at it, it talks about what is the purpose of the pump cross feed valve, okay? It will allow operation of engines from one tank. Number 10, provides a means to maintain a balanced fuel load condition. Provide a means to maintain a balanced fuel load condition. So normal fuel cross feed system operation in multi-engine aircraft provides a means to maintain a balanced fuel load condition. Normal fuel cross feed system operation in a multi-engine aircraft provides a means to maintain a balanced fuel load condition. Guys, take your first quiz and I'll see you soon.